Hello everyone, it's time for comprehension. Please make sure you've got a paper and pencil ready with you. And you can always pause the video if you want to read the text and find your answer. Make sure all your answers are full complete sentences. Here we go. I'll start from the bottom uh, two lines of page 28. Lay aside your shields and spares, he commanded them. Stack them against the wall, for you will have no need of them inside. I see friendship in your eyes, nobility in your bearing, and know that we have nothing to fear from you. But tell me, who are you and what you've come for, dressed as you are for war? I am the wolf, prince of the Geats, nephew of the Hygelic the king. And if you would kindly allow us to speak face to face with Rothgar, your gracious king, we will explain to him in full the purpose of our sea tossed journey to the land of the Danes. Wolfgar, the herald, was as wise in judgment as he was fierce in war and led them at once into Hurot to meet Rodgar, his beloved master, grey haired, now with sorrowing. These men, grim though they may look in their mail armour, have come in peace. I am sure of it, my king, Wolfgar declared. The king declared before the king and his thanes, chief among them and the renowned prince of the Geats is the noble Beowulf, nephew of Hygelic, your friend and ally of a lifetime. Such a trusty man can only have come to help us, I think. Sudden hope warmed the old king's heart as he looked upon Beowulf standing there before him. You will not remember me, he said. I knew you once as a child when I came to the land of the great of the Geats. Ever since then, the Geats have been my lifelong friends and allies. You are most heartily welcome to Hurod, for I know of you by hearsay also. Everyone here does. I heard tell that you possess the strength of at least 30 men in each hand. I am thinking, and I am hoping, and I am praying that you might have been sent here to us by God himself as our salvation to stand against Grendel. Right, I'll pause there for my first question. How strong is Beowulf supposedly? How strong is Beowulf supposedly? You can pause the video here and write down your answer. That fiend of the night, Perhaps, Beowulf, it is only you that has the power to deal the monster, the death blow we long for, the end he so richly deserves. Mighty in his ring-meshed mail and gloriously helmed in silver, Beowulf stood tall before Rothgar and his thanes, every one of them praying too, that this man would indeed prove to be their earthly redeemer, their strong avenger. They listened well as he spoke. I have come, great king of the Danes, the wolf began, as Hedgelet's hearth kinsman, and in his name I am here to serve you as I have served him. In many a battle, all the Geats have heard of your plight, of this evil Grendel, who after the shadows fall, prowls this hall, making of it his nightly lair. From seafarers and travellers, we have learned how each night this most splendid of mead halls must be surrendered to Grendel, the night stalker, how he preys foully on your people, eating their flesh, drinking their blood. I am no poet, my lord king, nor a harp player. I am a fighter. I am known at home and wherever I go as a warrior prince, as an enemy of all evil. I have only last year dealt death to five giants who threatened our land, broken their necks with my bare hands. I did the same to dozens of sea serpents who plagued our waters. If I could do that much, I thought, then I could go over the sea to you, great Rothgar, and offer to rid you of Grendel, this vile and loathsome destroyer. Why, I thought, should I not face him in a trial of strength and destroy the destroyer? My next question is, what does the word vile mean? 
So I stand here in Hewod, your kingly hall and home with my good companion, ready and willing to serve you. All of us are strong and steadfast in our determination to drive out this evil once and for all, to bring peace and joy again to your kingdom and to restore you at last to your rightful heart. Be assured, I shall do all that is in my power to achieve this. It is my promise. All their long lingering sorrow was banished as Rothgar and his thanes listened to Beowulf's brave words and looking upon him. No one there doubted for one moment that Beowulf could achieve and would achieve all he promised. I've heard, Beowulf went on, that Grendel never carries a weapon, nor war axe, nor sword on his murderous missions. Well then, neither will I. I seek no advantage. I need no advantage. I will carry no shield, nor wear any armor. I shall go up against this beast bareheaded, just as I fought the giants and sea serpents. With my bare hands, I shall grapple with this foul fiend and fight him to the death. Whichever of us dies must face the Lord of Judgment, as we all must when the time comes. The next question is, what does the word grapple mean? What does the word grapple mean? I ask only that, should the worst befall me, sent to Hajlak, my king, this battle shirt of chain mail I now wear. There will, I fear, be nothing of us left to bury, should this flesh-eating monster prevail over us. In that case, from all I hear, he would carry off our bloody corpses to his unlovely larder and feast on us, as he has on so many brave men before us. But God willing, it will not turn out like that. Rothgar rose slowly to his feet. You cannot imagine what joy you bring us in coming here to Hurot, he cried. For me and, all, and for all of Denmark, it is truly a blessed and timely arrival. You shall, I promise, you be well rewarded for your kindness, your concern for us and for your great courage. We've been for 12 long years a people in pain with nothing but fear and hate in our hearts. Sadly, my whole and heart companions have been sorely dwindled in numbers by the ravages of this ruthless killer. So many have tried to stand against him. My next question is, what does the phrase dwindled in numbers mean? What does the phrase dwindled in numbers mean? Their courage wetted by bear, each roared his defiance, boasting, ale cup in hand that he would wait here in Hurod after nightfall and tear the evil one limb from limb when he came. But when morning came, it was always the same gruesome story. Hurot had become a slaughterhouse yet again, the walls blood spattered and the floors blood soaked, and my dear brave kinsmen all gone as me to the monster's lair. But none of these was as mighty a warrior as you, Beowulf. They had courage in full measure, but not the strength. Okay, my next question is, how long King Rothgar and his people have been suffering for? How long King Rothgar and his people have been suffering for? Okay, I will carry on now. The next question is, how did King Rothgar describe the state of Hurod every morning after the gruesome killings? I'll repeat my question. How did Rothgar describe the state of Hurod every morning after the gruesome killings? Sorry guys, it got a bit noisy. I'll repeat my question again. Um, how did King Rothgar describe the state of Herod every morning after the gruesome killings? Okay, you have both, so bring your men, 
sit down, eat with us and drink with us. Tell us the stories of your great exploits, for just to hear them would fill our hearts with new hope and happiness. Then a space was cleared at the banqueting table for the wolf and his geese, and the horn of sweet meat was passed around from geet to Dane and Dane to geet. That evening, the poet stood and sang his words, and the harp played softly, and the lilting lute and laughter echoed once again through the rafters of Hewrot. Right, I will stop there. My last question is, I want you to listen to the, listen to Beowulf's speech again and tell me, do you think his speech was convincing and why? Do you think Beowulf's speech was convincing and why? It was a very long speech. If you want, you can go back in the video, have a listen and tell me what you think. Okay, and I will tell you the answers now. So my first question was, how strong is the wolf, supposedly? And that's where King Rolfgar describes his strength. He says over here on page 31, I heard tell that you possess the strength of at least 30 men in each hand. That's what he was supposed to be known for. Strength of at least 30 men in each hand. The next question was, what does the word vile mean? And that is here on this side of the page. Rothgar and offer to rid you of Grendel, this vile and loathsome destroyer. Vile means nasty or disgusting. The next question was, what does grapple mean? That was page 35 over here. With my bare hands, I shall grapple with this foul fiend and fight him to the death, which means to wrestle with bare hands. He says it right here, with my bare hands, I shall grapple. That means to wrestle or fight without any weapon, barehanded. My next question was, what does the phrase dwindled in numbers mean? That is on page 36 over here. Um, here we go. Sadly, my whole and half companions have been sorely dwindled in numbers by the ravages. That means decrease in numbers. So all his Soldiers, warriors, and kinsmen decreased drastically in numbers. That means they got murdered and dwindled in numbers. The next question was, how long King Rothgar and his people have been suffering for? That's again over here. We have been for 12 long years a people in pain. So they've been suffering for 12 years. The next question was, how did King Brothgar describe the state of Hurot every morning after the gruesome killings? That's over here. Hurot had become a slaughterhouse. Yet again, the walls blood spattered and the floors blood soaked. So he referred Hurot to become a slaughterhouse with blood spattered walls and blood soaked floors. And my last question was, if you think Bewell's speech was convincing and why? Now, this could be uh, a different answer for each one of you, but mainly I think Bewell's speech was very convincing because um, King Rothgar and all his men were really happy, full of hope. They, got really, they really believed in his speech uh, and they looked at the wolf spoke about his bravery, his courage and strength. He told them that he has always won his battles against the deadliest of enemies, which brought lots of hope uh, for King Rothgar. And yes, they were surely convinced of the wolf's speech. Right, that's the end of this lesson today. I will see you next time. Take care, bye.